In today's episode of Open at Microsoft, I have again with me Nell and we'll be looking at deployment from Git using Portainer. Stay tuned, you don't want to miss that. Hey Neil, it's nice to have you back. So we, uh, the previous session, we talked about what was Portainer, like what is this project to help you with containers and stuff, but we're having you back. And today we will be looking at how it works, like seeing it in action. Am I right? Yeah, I, I thought I might show you how easy it is to set up a, a, a GitOps pipeline and deploy an application. Um, you know, this to set up a pipeline, it would normally require a bunch of separate tooling. It would require some some know-how. Um, and I just want to kind of show you how easy it is to do in Portainer. Great. So beginner scenario, getting started, at least with that tool. And even like if you're new to container and like orchestration and stuff like that, that will definitely help you. Yeah, I mean, if, you, if you're net new to to the world of containers, starting with a GitOps pipeline is probably not how I would recommend you get started. In all honesty, you, you kind of want to want to cut your teeth and understand how a container works and how it's different from a virtual machine and the fact that it's stateless and how, how you have to expose the ports that you that you want to have out in the internet. There's nothing; it's not just open by default. So there's a, there's a bunch of learnings, but yeah, this is, this is to sort of show you how a relatively advanced piece of capability can be made really really simple. Okay, so let's have a look. All right, so here I have a Portainer instance, uh, same kind of instance I used used in the last session. Um, and here I have a Git repo, um, just github.com Portainer demos. Um, and here I have a couple of folders and inside these folders I have some files. Um, I, again, open speed test as an example, which I'll just use because it's, it's nice and quick to deploy. Uh, and uh, here we have the Portainer community edition running and I'm just going to start with uh, probably Docker Swarm, why not? Um, and let's say that you want to deploy your application. This is a brand new environment. There's nothing running in it. So I can come into Stacks. Now, Stacks uh, is a Docker uh, terminology and Stack basically means for those in, in Docker standalone world, that means Docker Compose. Uh, for those who are familiar with Docker Swarm, Stacks equals a Swarm stack. And a stack is simply a, a group of applications that run together as a single cohesive entry, which also means an application. Um, and so you can say, I want to add a stack and I want it from Git. So let's just call it speed test. And here we need the repo URL, which is simply this URL right here, and we put the URL in here. Um, this is main branch. Uh, we're using the main branch, so I don't need to change it. And here we are in the Docker uh, slash open speed test. Open speed test. Oh, you're courageous typing. I would totally copy paste. <laughs> <laughs> I, in all honesty, I probably should have open speed test. Well, let's see. Compose.yml. <laughs> I always always do YAML. Uh, you can do GitOps updates if you want in a reconciliation loop, and we can deploy. Now, assuming that I have not made a mistake in here, um, this will basically go and deploy the application from Git, and we should be able to see the services. So there is the speed test service. Um, and you can see it's preparing. Uh, I'll turn on auto refresh. Why not? Um, and this will basically come through and switch from preparing to running once it's pulled the image. Now, in the background, obviously, you know what Docker is doing. It's doing a Docker image pull and pulling the image. Here we go. It's running. Um, and in fact, I can come in here and I can see the logs. And yep, it's it's actually there and running. Uh, and I can actually say I want to click on this port, and here is my open speed test running. And you know I'm not going to click it because this will just destroy the bandwidth for the stream. But um, <laughs> thank you. This this is this is basically uh, a quick and easy way to get a service running with Git. Now I could actually come in here and change the port, so I could come in here and I could actually edit this. Um, I could so change this. when the, when portainers start. Does it make a local copy? Does it just keep it in memory and trash it at, when it's done deploying? How does that part work? No, so it, we're actually doing a, a Git clone into the, the Portainer server's local storage repo, and we use that uh, to, to then take care of any, any, any deployments, um, which is useful because if you have any kind of environment files or whatever else uh, in the repo, we'll, we'll clone it down at the same time. 
Um, mm -hmm. We do okay. we do a shallow clone, so we don't actually go and clone all of the versions of that repo. We simply clone clone the latest version of the repo. Um, so that makes that nice and easy. You know, you can we're just pulling it down. That's uh, nice. Uh, inside, uh, if I come into here, um, oops, back into stacks again. If I come into here, uh, and there's actually a bunch of additional capabilities you can turn on. If we turn on GitOps updates, you can see here we've got some some um, features that are limited to our paid edition. Yeah, Portainer is an open core product, so we have the open source and we have the paid. Um, and in the paid version, there's actually some additional capabilities. Um, where you can actually force a redeployment and force a repull. Um, many people, by the way, uh, reuse tags. So they'll use the latest tag or they'll, they'll reuse um, version tags. And so repull says, actually, even if the compose file hasn't changed, let's just assume that it's a new version of the image. So we'll actually repull the image anyway, and then we'll, and then we'll leave it up to Docker to determine whether it needs to be redeployed or not. So this is, this is a nice little feature for those of you that... Um, that reuse your image image labels, which you shouldn't yeah. do, by the way, because that's kind of bad practice. Um, you no, know, but when when you're in deployment, like uh, not deployment, but development, it's, you know, of course, <laughs> <laughs> we all do it, but we shouldn't. Correct. Now, if I do so, that that was Docker Swarm, and I'll come back to that one in a minute. Um, but I can do the exact same thing with Kubernetes. I can come into Kubernetes here, and I can say, "Here's my. I want to create from a manifest, and here's my repo." Um, in this case, I'm going to go back one level, and here I'm going to go into the kube folder, and I'm going to use a node red file. So if I come back here again, and I should just paste this again. Um, one of the things in our in the paid edition, um, we also let you actually save all these things. So you can actually save a bunch of um, of of repos already defined. Um, again, we're not needing to change this one. And so now it's kube slash uh, node red dot yaml. As an example, for those who aren't familiar with node red, it's an industrial application, but um, and we turn this on. So again, kube node red, and I'm using the namespace in it, and I can go deploy again. And all things being equal, this will go and deploy a node red application. You can see here's the node red. And it is already running, it seems. Let me just refresh that page. And so here is here it is now. So I can come into node red here and I can see here it is here. And I should be able to click this. And here is my node red application up and running. Um, so this was, again, a really simple way to get an application running. Now, again, what I've done here, because I, I went quite quickly, is I've configured a GitOps pipeline here, right? I haven't just deployed an application. I've deployed an application from a Git repo. So I could actually come in here now, and I could come in and edit this YAML and make a change. And then you know, five minutes later, um, that change will be propagated into this into the running environment. So it's a really nice, simple way of being able to to come in and see what's oh, running. Oh, so now it's sync. It's synced. So it, it's so when I, when I went that. into okay, the application, that's right? cool. So here, create. Oh, let me just do it again slowly, right? So Git repo, you turn on GitOps updates, and down here is the reconciliation loop. So oh, here, we, yeah, yeah, so okay, every five no, minutes, yeah. we're going to go and check the Git repo, look for changes. I mean, I could make this one minute if I want, and I probably should have. Um, I can make this. Uh, a, a whatever interval I want, and at, at every five minutes we'll go and check the repo. We we will go and check the actual commit the the the, 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 com, the commit the git commit hash. We will see if the hash has changed, and if the hash has changed, we will we will we will basically pull and redeploy the application. Should there should there be differences in it, so we'll we'll pull it. We'll look for differences and we'll redeploy. Um, now this this is a poll. It's a reconciliation loop. Um, if you don't want to do that, you can do webhook, and then you can have your upstream CI trigger this webhook, and we will then go and do a loop against against the repo and check for changes. So you can you can do either. Well, that's so great. This is, this is a full full reconciliation loop. Now again, you'll see here the UI interface here for setting up a, a GitOps pipeline was exactly the same for Kubernetes as it was Docker. There was there's no no noticeable difference between them. So you're not trying to learn differing tools if you have devs using Docker on their desktop and Kubernetes in the data center. And here it's one single cohesive uh, interface between them. So 
um, this is this is one of Portainer's sweet spots. Is we we try and we try and give you know uh, usability consistency across across orchestrators and everything else. So that makes it nice and nice and simple for you. Uh, let me see if this swarm one is updated. I, again, I should have made it. Um, it has already updated. So there you go. What this was on port three uh, three thousand. Now it's on three double o two, which is the change I made back up here. In the Git repo before, so this is that reconciliation loop occurring. So I came in here before and I edited this, and I changed this from three thousand to three double o two. And after that short period of time, um, that's now, in fact, running with that change. So I didn't have to do anything; the loop just continues. That's great. That's, so that's great. It's a it's a really really nice way to to bring GitOps pipelines to the user space. Um, this pipeline runs in the context of the logged in user to Portainer. So you, you know this is whoever it is, which, whichever dev or, or operations engineer or application engineer or whatever, whoever's logged into Portainer, they can they can create their own self serve pipelines in record speed, and they're not they're not really needing to know, you know a great depth of how GitOps works. I love it, and you are using GitHub repo, but I'm assuming any Git that is any available Git. through a URL will work. Yeah, Git, GitHub, Git T, uh, Bitbucket, all these things all all work fine. Um, yeah, we we use we use GitHub ourselves internally, so for us it's just I just use that for for all of our demos. But um, but yeah, I mean any 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 upstream Git repo, self hosted or or cloud, um, works perfectly fine for this. Um, it it doesn't matter as, as you saw or you may not have. Um, when you can actually, when you're doing a Git repo, you can actually turn on authentication. And if you actually need to authenticate against the repo to be able to retrieve these files, then you can actually go and do that. So you can actually turn on authentication. It doesn't have to be open open um, repos. They can they can be closed. Um, oh, interestingly, as well, if you have an application that is comprised of multiple um, manifests, you can actually just keep adding them, and you can add more and more and more manifests. So you can say, okay, I want this compose file and this compose file and this compose file, or this Kubernetes manifest and this manifest and this manifest, and we'll deploy all of them together, manage them all together, um, so it all deploys as one single cohesive type of environment. Definitely more advanced scenario. <laughs> <laughs> it just it just makes it really nice and easy. And as you can see here, yeah, it, was, it, it tells you the stack was deployed from this repo. Um, so update it uh, to 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 see the change. So quite a quite a cool thing. Um, in the paid version, by the way, we'll actually show you the the, the Git commit ID uh, that we're currently running. So whatever whatever version is running, we'll show you in Portainer the actual Git commit ID. So you can then go and correlate and say, okay, this is actually yep, this and this match, no problem. Um, if you're ever trying to actually triage or understand what's going on. Well, that's great. So for people or students that want to learn how to use that tool, they can use it. And like for enterprises, then they could go for like the, the paid version and have all the, the features and bells and whistles, like we say, right? Yeah, and even even our paid version, um, you know, I at my, at my heart am a technologist. So in our paid version, we have a a, a free version available from, to, to use when you're just getting started. So um, we have a what we call our three nodes free program. So even even in there, you can, you can go to Portainer, um, and you can actually go and get a, a license for our paid version for up to three nodes. And a, a node here is this definition. So this would be two nodes, this cluster. Um, so you, you can get management of three nodes with all of the features completely for free straight off our website, uh, instantaneous license delivery. So it makes it nice and easy. And by the way, if, if you hit this button, that'll all happen for you. So we'll we'll go and get a license automatically and deploy the new version, the paid version, um, up and running um, natively. But I don't want to turn this into an, into an ad. We're talking about the open source product here. <laughs> well, make sure people, the link is available. People can have a look. It's definitely helpful. And having the full version so we can learn, it's definitely good. So then like when you arrive at work, you say, yes, boss, I saw how it works. I have experience. I did try it. So definitely a great way to go. So thank you for for opening this the, the app this way that's very cool so again we'll provide all the link in the description for people to find portainer give it a try the academy with the documentation the training that is available mm -hmm. also for there thank you a lot for your time neil it was very appreciated and i wish you luck for the continuing of this thank project you. thank you appreciate it